uh, set off a suicide bomb in a subway tunnel near Times Square in New York City. He succeeded only in injuring himself. His family, though, remarkably says they're outraged, not by what he did, but by what the police did in the aftermath of the crime. In a statement, his family said this, quote, we're outraged by the behavior of law enforcement officials during this investigation. Today, we've seen our children as young as four years old held out in the cold, detained as their parents were questioned. One teenage relative was pulled out of high school classes and interrogated without a lawyer, without his parents. These are not the actions we expect from our justice system. We hope to see better days, see better in the days and weeks to come. Amr Zahar is a law professor at the University of Detroit Mercy, and he joins us tonight. Thanks all for coming on. Hey, good evening, Tucker. So it seems like this is a little baffling. Um, I had trouble believing it was real, actually, when I first read it. So you find out that someone in your family has attempted to kill strangers in the name of jihad uh, in a subway station, and you issue a statement saying that you've been wronged somehow? How does this work? Well, I mean, let's be clear. In that statement, they also said that they were heartbroken by the attack. So to characterize it as they were just attacking the police is wrong. But I think there is an issue, right, of bias in enforcement. We didn't see the police uh, conduct this sort of treatment against the family of Dylan Rue for Robert Deere, James Holmes, right? They just view Muslims and well, their families if, as, I don't as, know they as did or possible not. suspects, as suspicious all the time. No, we know I that wonder, they did. No, why do you, Look, why do you know, think, why do you, why do you think that is, I wonder? Have you seen the numbers on this? I mean, let's be totally what, real. What numbers? The, the numbers on likelihood of committing a terror attack in a public place, particularly a suicide bomb in a subway station, are a little higher for Muslims than they are for Presbyterians. I'm not attacking Muslims, some of Look, them are friends I mean, of mine, only, but let's be honest, you know, the, stop the, lying the, all the time. The, 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 well, the media thinks a terror attack's only a terror attack if it's committed by a Muslim anyway, all right? I mean, we saw Stephen Paddock, for instance, in Vegas. Look how the media treated his brother days after the attack. He became a superstar. It turns out he's actually a criminal. He was arrested not on, on child pornography show. charges Not on this a month show ago. he was. But look, here's no, what I'm not, I'm not talking. Me. So, so you come into this country. You come into this country if you're this guy's family from Bangladesh, okay? And you mm -hmm. come in here through the, the grace and kindness of the American people. You're here like 20 minutes, and all of a sudden you're complaining about bias against you and our justice system. It's like, you just got here. Where's the gratitude? Well, I didn't just get, and, I didn't, no, I'm not talking about you. I'm, talk, I'm not talking I, about you. I've been here my whole about, life. Needless to say, I'm talking about the family of the bomber. These people issue a statement like, you know, we're the victims here. It seems like in a normal well, country, you would say to people who just arrived, like, you know, you should apologize profusely and well, stop there's no, complaining there's no, about well, bias. Let's, let's hold, let's hold on a second. There's no, there's no indication that they didn't cooperate with law enforcement. In fact, Muslims across the country cooperate with law enforcement all the time. I think I'm looking at the bigger picture here, which is there is a bias in law enforcement. Look what happened to the clock boy down in Texas, who they said that he was committing a hoax bomb crime. He was questioned for four hours without a lawyer. They tried to say he was committing a hoax bomb. And it's not a hoax if you're telling everybody it's a clock. You think clock. he's the only and, one and who's they didn't think he had a question without a law? I mean, look, here's the point. Do you see something wrong with a system, our system, that invites people from impoverished foreign countries who show up here and immediately learn that they're victims and part of an interest group that's at war with the larger society? And that's clearly what happened in this case. Do you see that as a recipe for disunion in a country at all? Look, I think it's important to criticize uh, law enforcement when it acts in a biased way. Now, in this situation, we see, as in many situations, when it comes to Muslim Americans. a bomb in a subway Americans, station. I mean, gee whiz. Nobody's saying, nobody's, nobody's saying he's not guilty. Of course, he's guilty. He should go to jail for the rest of his life. But when you treat his family immediately as accomplices, when you don't do that with white criminals, then we have a problem. They do do it with white criminals. I just had a friend who had his door knocked down by the FBI. You know, you don't know anything. Maybe that's part of your problem. Steve, with the way people no, are well, treated Steve, in this country. Stephen, with, Pat, uh, Stephen yeah, Paddock's brother stupid. was a celebrity on the news. Stephen Paddock's brother was treated like a celebrity on the news jail for, for three days. Something horrible. Now, anyway, this is now totally he is so now he is. But they didn't know that when he after the shooting and he was treated right, like okay. a celebrity on the news. You're you just wrong about this. I wonder if people true. hate this country. Professor, uh, thank you. <laughs> I don't no, hate I'm this serious. Country. They're taught to hate this country, and it's distressing. Dan Bongino is a former NYPD officer, and he joins us tonight. Uh, so, Dan, I, I just want to uh, analyze this in a sober way. I'm getting a little spun up here. Um, is what you know about how the family of this lunatic, about how you know about how they were treated, is it inconsistent with the way law enforcement acts in general? Do you see this as an example of bias from what you know? No, Tucker, 
And that guy has no idea what he's talking about. I know he's not on the air anymore. I get it. Maybe it's a little unfair. But he had his platform. Now I'm going to take a shot at him. That guy's crazy. That is not law enforcement's bias. Does he have any idea how the process works? Let me explain how it actually works for reasonable people out there, not that maniac, okay? Here's how it works. When a bomb goes off in the city, you have this thing called an exigent circumstances contingency for Miranda, where you don't have to Mirandize people because you know what, Tucker? Another bomb could go off and somebody right. could be killed. Does he not know that? Has he never read? I mean, does he come on the air completely, entirely unprepared? So Long just to clarify, just to clarify for our viewers. So in those cases where the police are speaking to people without Mirandizing, without a lawyer present, they're not doing so to gather evidence in order to charge that person, but to find out if there's an imminent threat in some other direction. Is that what you're saying? If, yes. Thank you for saying that, Tucker. One, Miranda, just to be clear. If you're in custody and you're interrogated, plus those statements are going to be used in a proceeding, in a court proceeding later, then yes, you have to Mirandize people. Right. If your primary interest, Tucker, is saving the lives of people who could be killed in an additional bombing, what did you think the cops were going to do to the family of this yeah. Bangladeshi man? You think they were going to show up with a plate of tea and crumpets and, and sit down? I mean, is, is that guy kidding me? What did he think was going to happen? What, I mean, do you have any time to go there and say, hey, folks, listen, can I give you a back rub? You go there. You act as professionally as you can, of course, as I know the NYPD does. I work there. But you say, we've got a problem. A member of your family is alleged to have just blown himself up in a subway. We need information, and we need it now. Is there anyone else involved? And this is what, you know, out, the family's outraged, Tucker. You know what? We're outraged. You know what we're outraged, outraged about? This care attorney who came on afterwards and gave the statement, by the way, who care, jumps out in front of the screen afterwards every time, worried about phony mass outbreaks of Islamophobia. And Americans are also outraged about being the most compassionate country on earth when it comes to immigration. And yet we get slapped in the face every time, like we're the mutts here, not of this course. guy who tried no, to kill it's people. It's totally right. We import more than a million people from the third world every year. And the second they arrive, the left convinces them they're victims and the rest of the country hates them, and it's a, it's a disaster. Dan, thank you for your sober analysis of that.